Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today I first wanted to start off by saying that the description of this video is going to be slightly different than it normally is because normally I have a lot of links, but I'm suspecting that there might be a chance that some of my videos are being affected by the fact that I do have a lot of external links to lead to various other sources for me. And so I'm going to try and either delink them or just not have them for the first maybe 24 or 48 hours just as a test run to see if that does have any impact on whether a video gets trending or whether a video gets recommended, etc. Because I do know sometimes YouTube does that. They don't like whenever there are links that lead away from YouTube site. And so sometimes if that is the case for a video, what they'll oftentimes do is they'll limit the video in some capacity. So whether or not that's true or not, I'm not sure. So if that is something that you notice that the description doesn't have the Amazon affiliate links or anything to that effect, that might be the reason why. I'm going to try and add those on maybe after the first 24, 48 hours just so that way they are there and also please if you have any questions or if you want to get any information if you need a certain link to any type of uh, website or anything to that effect please just leave a comment and I will be glad to provide that for you in the pinned comment that I normally have up there so this video is going to be about Star Wars I'm so sorry about that long introduction but George Lucas defends Star Wars prequel says they were designed for 12 year olds so here is my big question and here is of course what today's real, you know, today's video is going to be about is, was Star Wars actually created for 12-year-olds? Was was Star Wars actually created for kids, or was it always meant to be family entertainment? Now, according to George Lucas, who was the person that defended it, he claims that this is the case, that the prequels were actually created for kids, but this really just flies in the face of reason, I think, because his argument is based on the premise that, oh, well, if you were 10 years old and you saw Star Wars, and then 20 years later is when the prequels came out, you would have been 30, well, then obviously it's been 20 years and so therefore the films that first came out that you first loved are now 20 years past what you once were and so therefore they aren't really made specifically for you anymore. Now I'd fight against this because I would think that most people could look to the original Star Wars films and recognize that those were never ever seen as kids films. Sure, they may have been seen as family films, but a family film and a kids film are not the same thing. A family film is a film that is meant for everyone in an entire family. Kids, uh, teenagers, adults, older people, etc. Every single person in a family unit, those are what family films are meant for, meaning that there is something that every single person of any age in a family can overall enjoy, and it's a film, therefore, that most people can enjoy together as a family. I think most of us can agree that Star Wars are great movies to watch with families and friends. The prequels, on the other hand, definitely have more of a kid friendly film type vibe to them, but because they still remain within the Star Wars universe and they still deal with certain characters, there are still those family fa like family film type moments to them. Now, George Lucas can try and say that he geared it more towards the younger audiences by certain additions, like for example, adding people like Jar Jar Binks. He made it very clear that Jar Jar Binks was added in there to be a stupid character that people, that kids could be able to enjoy. Now, we can take him at his word on that. We could obviously understand that there's a lot of truth that seems to be a part of that. But it also doesn't really understand, or rather doesn't really explain, how there are so many other parts and other characters that kids really wouldn't be necessarily drawn to. Especially characters like Darth Maul. The fighting sequences that kids are normally not going to be looking at, oh my god, look at that choreography. You know, kids don't really notice those types of things. Kids don't usually aren't drawn to those types of things. Kids are drawn to more basic things, basic plot elements, basic character elements. For example... Just having Jar Jar Binks, for example, him just walking around, falling around, making funny noises. For most kids, that is indeed going to be what they are going to remember most from any given film. But for any of us, even of those who have been critical of the prequels, like I myself, know the prequels have a lot more going on to them, especially story-wise, especially when you add into all of the different subplots of the Senate and the politics. If you're going to try and tell me, George that this film, that these films were made for 12 year olds, then why are you having all this behind the scenes commentary between the separatist and the politics behind the scenes that you knew would go way over their heads? So I think that you have a point to an extent, but obviously I think that you are wrong as well. And so here from sci-fi.com it says, though fans have mar largely moved on to debating the new trilogy, it looks like George Lucas's unfortunate lot in life is to stand by and defend his three Star Wars prequel films, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith. Now, again, when it comes to these films, I am very critical of the prequels because I think the writing is much worse than what the originals were. And I think it is because George Lucas did try to focus more so on kids, more so than anyone else. But by doing so, 
so, he couldn't let go of the fact that he still was able to create a universe that could be enjoyed by all. So I really think that the reason why the prequels failed so much is because, in his mind, he was making a kid's movie, but in his heart, he knew he was making a Star Wars movie. He knew he was making something that he cared a lot about, that he wanted to make sense, that he wanted to be able to uh, justify within the realm of the other Star Wars films that had previously existed. And so in the end, he still made a family film. But because he tried to gear it in his mind more towards kids, I think that's what had a bigger impact on the dialogue being as crappy as it was. Some of the character decisions, some of the acting decisions being portrayed on screen also being so cartoonish, being a part of that choice and being a part of the problem that I think led to the prequels being remembered in such a negative light by so many different people. Phantom Menace turned 20 years old this year. In fact, just a, what, the past week, it turned 20 years old. And the celebrated uh, the celebrated filmmaker spoke with StarWars.com, which compiled a comprehensive oral history of Episode 1. And so these are the words here from George Lucas that I want to focus on. He says, The films were designed for 12-year-olds. I said that right away, right from the very, very beginning and the very first interview I did for A New Hope. It's just that they were so popular with everybody that everybody forgot that. Then when I came back to do Phantom Menace, it was 20 years later. So, if you were 10 years old when you saw New Hope, you would be 30 years old and you saw Phantom Menace. So you weren't a kid anymore. I think you were kind of embarrassed, and what you thought was a really fantastic movie for a 12-year-old wasn't that great for a grown-up. I think that was the main cause of the fall of Episodes 1, 2, and 3. Believe me, it took a beating. But here's the thing. You've already contradicted yourself in your own statement by you saying that even though in your head you designed the films for 12-year-olds, you recognize that it was popular with everybody. The popularity was with everybody. So that's not just those 10 year olds back during the 1970s, 1980s, but that is with the 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 year olds. Again, all different L levels, all different impacts of the family unit because it was family entertainment. It was not kid entertainment. It was family entertainment. And so you can say all you want about how in your head they were made for 12 year olds, but we can see the premieres. We can see the people that were drawn to those films and we know just by the fact that there are so many age ranges between all of us. I mean, go ahead and compare all of us together, all of the Phantom Menace, all the people who are part of the Phantom Collective. All of us are of different age groups. Again, some people are still in their teens, late teens, some going into their 50s or 60s. So the, 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 the age range here is, is so vast. And that's because these stories, especially those original stories, really do reach out to a wide-ranging audience. And I think that what he's trying to do is he's trying to compensate for the fact that he created an incredible universe that was made for all. And then he decided in the 90s, hey, guess what, we're late 2000s, hey, now I want to try and actually make the kids' movies that I was trying to make in the very beginning. And by focusing more so on that, he dumbed down some of the language, he dumbed down some of the dialogue, he dumbed down some of the characters and some of the stories, but he still couldn't let go. He still couldn't let go of the universe, the rich universe, that he wanted to build, which is why he had all of that complicated behind-the-scenes stuff going on that so many people are still, older people, are critical of. Because, let's be honest, the politics behind it is somewhat boring much of the time. We don't care about trade disputes. We don't care about the separatists, etc. Except for some of us who obviously care more about the rich history of the story. And had it been handled better, I think that it probably would have been a better part and better aspect of the story. But I think that in his own words here, he contradicts himself. Because what he's saying is that he made it originally and you say, Oh, I can go back all the way to the first interview I did for New Hope. And I was making this kid, I was making this film for kids. I was making this film for 12 year olds. And yet we know A New Hope had such a cultural impact, especially here in the United States, that far surpassed anyone of 12 years old. And yes, one could say, well, look to the toys, look to the action figures, but guess what? Who bought those action figures? It was not just 12 year olds, it was people of all different ranges because Maple fell in love with these characters. And it doesn't matter how old you are, if you fall in love with a character, you're going to be much more likely to want to buy that character in some form or fashion. Whether it's in being able to see that character whenever you want by buying the DVD or Blu-ray. Or whether it's in having an action figure, so that way they're constantly reminded of that figure. Just like for me, I got Zoltan here, thanks to Laura Ryan Stole My Fan Fiction Story, because I thoroughly enjoy that character played by Brian Blessed. It's very appropriate that we talk about Brian Blessed, seeing that he was one of the characters in The Phantom Menace. <laughs> fantastic role, fantastic voice work. But George, seriously, man, you can defend the prequels. And I think that there are many people out there that will defend the prequels right alongside you. But don't try and make this argument that just does not work. That the reason why people didn't like The Phantom Menace, that didn't like Clone Wars, that didn't like... Revenge of the Sith, which is much fewer, by the way, because many people will say that Revenge of, the Fifth as, Revenge of the Sith as a movie is one of the better Star Wars films, period. Not the first two, but Revenge of the Sith especially. 
Instead, why don't you try and say, even though this was my intention, obviously, I wrote my original trilogy, I wrote the original Star Wars films, they appeal to every single person, and I decided to try and take a different spin on the prequels, and that is where I made my mistake. Just own up to it. Just own up to it. Just own up to the fact that the prequels did not have nearly as strong characters, did not have nearly as strong character development or writing that you had in the original trilogy. Now, again, people will defend the prequels until they're blue in the face, and I have absolute and total respect for anyone that defends the prequels. However, we can all admit that there are clear objective issues with that film, and the reason why is because George wanted to try and put too much into it to, one, appeal to the kids, but two... He wanted to overutilize something that he did not overutilize in the original trilogy, and that was his use of CGI. And this was very clear when he decided to try and go back and tinker with his film, change certain elements of his film to try and again appeal more to that younger audience. By having more modern tech, by having more modern emphasis, by having Han not shoot first, for example. And I think that what he realized after the fact was that even though his intention may have been to make a movie for 12-year-olds, what he ended up doing was he created a universe for all people, of all ages, of all backgrounds. And that's why I think, especially in comparison to what the current state of Star Wars is, where now the current people running Star Wars are trying to make it about certain people and certain groups, because in their minds they think, oh no, Star Wars needs to focus on bringing in new audiences at the expense of the old, I think that you're seeing the same exact mistake being made. And that's why, just like we saw with the prequels, where there was a backlash, just like we saw with the prequels, where it took some time to get used to it, just so time, it took some time before people started to defend them, just like you saw with the prequels, where George Lucas started to try and go back and change various things to fit the audience that he originally had intended, you're seeing a very different side of that from Disney's Lucasfilm. Because what Disney has done is they've decided just to say screw the entirety of the old fan base by us forcing these characters down, by making terrible storylines, terrible story arcs, and allowing someone like a Ryan Johnson to totally blow everything up that they were trying to create in the first place. So you see, even lazier, even worse images, even worse storytelling happening in this modern era. And it's not because they're trying to and succeeding in reaching their target audience, it's because they do not realize the audience that is there in the first place. And George Lucas needs to learn this for himself. That the series that he's created, again, the world that he's created, even going into the Clone Wars animated series itself, that it is family entertainment. It's not kids entertainment. It is family entertainment. And though I would say Disney has a good grasp on it being for the entire family, what Disney needs to learn is that there is a key and core audience. And the more you decide to ignore that audience, the more that you decide to act as if that audience does not matter, and does not have a voice. And the more that you decide to say that the loud, vocal, not minority, but loud and vocal fan base that wants to have good, great Star Wars stories once again, that are for the people, that are for the fans, that are going to give us good and honest storytelling with great character arcs, until that happens, you're going to find yourself, George Lucas, in the same position as those as, at Star Wars over in Disney's land. Because let's just be honest for a second. We might have a lot of love and admiration for you, George, because you created one of the greatest IPs of all time, because you created one of the best universes of all time, of which some of the greatest novels have been written, of which some of the greatest stories and movies have been made. But don't think for a second that you can change your own history. Just like with Disney, don't think for a second that you can change your own history either. We remember these things. We remember all the words that are said, all the words that are spoken by Ryan Johnson, Pablo Hidalgo, all people that represent you. These are things that we will never forget. And when episode 9 coming up, with the rise of Skywalker coming up, and with all the different news and all the different words being said by those involved with the project, and by the very clear examples of how they have lost sense and lost touch with the people that are going out to see, see and support their films, let us not forget the mistake of George Lucas by doing the same thing. By saying, this is just for 12-year-olds. Even though, by his own words, he knew it became popular with everybody. The reason why the prequels were bad was because George did not understand or accept who was loving and following his project, and instead wanted to make it about himself. Disney, of course, has done that in leaps and bounds, and while I will easily defend George Lucas's prequels far beyond and far ahead of the, non of the nonsensical sequel trilogy we have today, I think it's important for us to understand history, and I think it's important for us to understand who Star Wars is for, why Star, why Star Wars is so popular in the first place, 
and how Star Wars can indeed, and this is going to piss off a lot of them, especially the trolls, how Star Wars can indeed be great again by understanding that fan base and by giving the fan base what they want. Because as we learn from movies like John Wick, as we've learned from projects like, for example, Sonic of the <laughs> director actually saying, hey, I'm going to listen to you guys. We're going to push it back. And honestly, I think that's going to help them financially back in 2020, you know, down the road in 2020 when they actually release that film because people are going to be more likely to support it because, hey, look, at least this guy listened. We can't just look at these films as just being pure popcorn flick and not being deeper stories that reach people on a very deep level, whether they're 12 years old or not. Anyway, guys, what's y'all thoughts about this? Do you think that Star Wars is made for 12-year-olds? Do you think that George Lucas needs to kind of just let that die, let that go to re- you know, let that go to rest, or at least when he says those words, go on and say, "But even though I was making it for this certain group of people, that at the end of the day, I ended up creating something much bigger than myself, much bigger than the world that I myself had envisioned and the audience that I had envisioned." Could George be more honest with himself, more honest with those around us? And do you think that George should really have this mindset so hopefully he can have an impact on the current state of Star Wars with Disney? Because Disney obviously needs to take a page out of this handbook and needs to understand you can't go after your fans. You can't just ignore your core fan base. Otherwise, just like the prequels have been mocked for years and years and years, even though they have their defenders. If you have even less of a story, if you have even less interesting characters like you have with the sequel trilogy, how do you think that's going to fare? in the next 10 to 20 years. Love to hear your thoughts about all of this in the comments below, guys. Please leave a comment, leave a like, leave a subscribe again. YouTube is playing around with the algorithm. I just watched a video today that talked about how they've also played around with how subscriptions work because of recent channels being uh, losing crazy amounts of subs because of public scandals happening. So please, if you can, share the video, share the channel with those that you think might like the content. Please make sure you hit the bell notification because YouTube is always trying to basically limit and hurts smaller channels from being able to grow. I really would appreciate it. And as I said, links are not going to be available in this video for the first 24 to 40 hours as a test to see if that does indeed impact just how the algorithm works. Thank you so much, guys, for your patience. Thank you so much also for supporting the new stream schedule that I've been doing with morning streams. And please stay tuned for more streams coming in the near future. Have a wonderful day, guys. And as always, God bless.